While Elliot distracts the bodyguard, I'll lift Keller's wallet and phone into a briefcase. All right, I'm on it. If I just take Keller out, is there another way to Moreau? Not a fast one. Moreau got his start smuggling antiquities from war zones. Statue of limitations is way past on those crimes. No, no, that doesn't matter. The more experienced a criminal becomes, the more sophisticated he gets at covering his tracks. You go back to his first crimes, that's where you see the rough edges. It's sort of like... Archaeology. Archaeology of crime. The further back you go in a criminal's career, the more primitive his methods, the more mistakes you can find as a way in. A lot more mistakes. Since Moreau started with antiquities, these companies and these bank accounts are the closest tied to his real life. And since he's moved up, Keller started running that part of the business. And it's a cash cow. The valuables from, from the looted Iraqi museum or an archaeological dig, they fetch millions on the black market in the West. Yeah, but unlike a stolen Monet or the Rosalind Diamond, these pieces aren't registered or insured. So they're impossible to track. Man, I should have gotten to that years ago. <laughs> yeah. I mean, before we went straight. So, Keller steals a statue from a dig in Iraq, and he mules it through customs using a little kid, and he sells it to rich Americans for five million bucks. That five million funds terrorist training camps, weapons sales. One thing that's got me stumped is that little girl's arrest didn't break Keller's stride at all. I mean, he's already off on a flight to London. Apparently, he's a regular at Claridge's auction house. Because you don't just sell on the black market. The real payoff, the big money, is when you move it through legitimate auction houses. You fake up the papers, you scrub off the blood and dirt, and you clean it up so that all the pretty people can show it off in their pretty bloody houses. Your coat, sir. Hey, heads up. Here you go. What do you got, Parker? Nothing unusual. But he does have an auction card from Claridge's. Does it have an item number on it? 857204. 1905 style strong room. Walls two feet thick. Cast iron. Way ahead of its time. But probably taken out with an acetylene burner during the post-war crime waves. Retrofitted hinges and alarms in the 1980s. The Thatcher security boom, but English damp won't allow for heat sensors to work. I almost feel bad for you. I looked up the number. Great. I recognize over half of this stuff. Oh, hello. Last time I saw you was at the Louvre. Well, actually, you were in the backseat of my car, but before that, you were at the Louvre. I Parker, focus. Okay. We've got Napoleonic silver. Oh, some great Russian icons. 17th century. And Statue, gold guy, uh, loincloth, feral beard, and very rectangular feet. Oh. When I introduced myself, he addressed me as your grace rather than the more common my lady. Um, he gave a little bow and kissed my hand. And what was the Earl Marshal part about? Oh, he controls the succession of titles in the peerage, so this is key. There are 86 unclaimed baronies in Great Britain. It's just a title that no one holds. And does it come with a castle? Sometimes, yeah. So, this is Keller's heart's desire, I take it. Oh, yeah. Checked into it, man. He's applied for an audience with Earl Marshall six times in the past two years. Denied. Good guess. It's not really a guess when it's that good, is it? The name of this gun is called the Mummy's Tiara. Come on, man. That can't be real. Am I going to have to steal a corpse again? Oh, it's real, all right. And it's almost impossible to pull off in a country that has an actual monarchy. So, the Mummy's Tiara involves using a forged relic to purchase a royal title. A forged relic? That means we need a forger. I know a couple guys in the States. No, partisan. Uh-uh. Partisan, mm. you're gonna do it. I'm a hacker. I hack, I don't forge. You're not making a forgery. You're gonna create a work of art. Smell it. That's how we knew that Nate was lying. Oh, yeah, it smells like a statue. In gold. And? Oh, and, and some cinnamon. There's a little cinnamon on it. And cardamom. 
Those are the spices that statue was packed with as it lay in its tomb for thousands of years. But those spices were only used in Libyan tombs, not Egyptian ones. Elliot, fill the base. It's rough. It's been sanded. Markings from the acidic cleanser used in the British Museum in the 1800s. And that's how I knew it wasn't a recent find. Can I taste it? You should. Go on. Tastes like cold. Yeah. So, as you know, Parker, most metals heat up when they're hot. Hey, is Sophia a princess? Parker, just... Did you take care of the auctioneer? Oh, yeah. Sophie told me to find out his deepest wish and give it to him. Yeah, yeah. But I thought that would take way too long, so... Does this rag smell like chloroform to you? Hmm? <gasps> what? He's gonna wake up in like three hours. Four, five, six. This exquisite Ming Dynasty vase was once smuggled out of mainland China in a donkey's saddlebag. It resurfaced decades later in the private collection of a Hong Kong billionaire, where it was left virtually unprotected by a subpar laser grid security system. <laughs> Reserve price 500,000 pounds. Can I have a starting bid, please? Okay. 550. And do I have 600? Yes, to the toupee on the right. Yes. An antique enamel and 16 karat gold jewelry box made right here in London. And let me tell you something it's worth a lot more than you think just by looking at it. Especially if you consider the 16 angry henchmen who are going to be following through the gardens of Versailles if you happen to pick it up. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Parker. Lot 739, a stone elephant crafted by Peter Carl Fabergé for his Imperial Highness. Hang on a second, let me see that. Yeah, no, that's a fake. Go ahead. Thank you. All right, Lot 872. We've got a collection of old books from the 1700s. Do I have a starting bid? I've got a starting bid. Ooh, okay. tired there, fella. Okay. All right, I see I have a phone bid of 150,000 pounds. Someone who loves to read old stuff. Yeah. All right. So, do I hear 160? Okay, Sophie, we gotta get Keller to bid at least 250,000 pounds. Anything over that, and Artisan can trace the money back to the source so we can find Moreau. Isn't it too much? 200. 200,000 pounds. Okay, we've got 200. Anyone? You like that? Yeah. You want to get with that? You got to win the books. She loves the books. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, 220. 220. Oh, hey, all right. Love a man in a pink shirt. Not afraid to wear color. It's a good sign. What? Why, that little toe rack. That's a family heirloom. How dare that little low-class trash bid on our ancestors' journal. Quite right. 260. 260. Going once. 280. Wait. Why is it too much? Uh, 280. 220, that was romantic. You know, 280, she's gonna think you're a sap. 280. Sophie. 300. Going once, twice, sold. 300, great, thanks for coming. 17th century. And... Statue, gold guy. Okay, perfect. Statue of Ra, bring it to me. Oh, and uh, bring those icons. I have an idea. I now know your real name. Uh, uh, no, that's not my real name. Charlotte was my stage name. Hmm. Any news on Keller's auction payment? Oh, yeah. My trace, I peeled back 10 layers of security off an airborne Wi-Fi connection. Airborne. You might be the greatest of all time, man. Did you find anything? Yeah, I found 10 shell companies, one of which is actually a promising lead. It's called Slapshot Investments, run by Mark Vector. Mark Vector, the hockey player, the enforcer? Great, let's get him. It's a problem. He struck a deal with the feds, he's protected. <laughs> what are you, what, what is the smile? What are you smiling at? What, are, what is that? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, let's go steal a federal witness. 